Hello and welcome to another video from the only channel you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it. And today's video is going to represent your very last set of hints. I, uh, I've made this video three times already and every time I go back and look at it, it's full of things that were, would, you know, just that didn't belong in there. And I actually they did, but it's just too confusing. I had one of them was like 45 minutes, so we're not going to do that. We're just going to try to keep it short and sweet if I can. Uh, the first thing uh, we're going to do, this is not really a hint, it's just simply a history of the universe from the very first thing that was ever created all the way up to the flood. And this is very important because the world that existed in that day, according to the Bible, is just like the world that exists in our day. And so there's a series of events that happened back in time that are going to have been repeating themselves and are coming to a similar conclusion. And that's why this is important for us. And that's why when I started the series, I said, when I tell you these things, you're going to know everything in the world. Everything. Every single thing that you could ever know. Or at least you'll be able to read the Bible and understand it. Understand what's happening to us, what's happened in the past, and what's going to happen in the future. All right, first thing. The Bible is made up of hundreds, if not thousands, of stories. And they're all important, but they're all important because they support the main story. The main story is civilization versus creation. You've got to always keep that in your head in order to understand not just what's going on with us, but everything in the Bible. <clears throat> the very first event in the Bible that is extremely critical was the creation of the first living being. And we don't know, you know, uh, how, when that happened, how long ago, but at some point, the creator of the universe created another living being. Now, it's not recorded whether he had already created all the stars and planets and so, so on and so forth, the whole, all the galaxies. Uh, we don't know. We don't know if the, this living creature was created first or after all that was done. But the first creature created was perfect and very, very powerful. As long as that living creature stayed connected to the Creator by the Holy Spirit, he was, he was able to do just anything. And what was the first thing that he did? Well, he, along with the Creator, created another living creature. And then the three of them together created more living creatures. And they kept doing that until all the angels that exist were created. Now, later on, we find out the identity of this first angel because the Bible calls Jesus the firstborn of all creation. And it also calls Jesus God's only begotten Son. So, the man that was Jesus originally was a spirit creature living with the Creator in heaven. And he was the very first one created, and through him, everything else that exists was created, including all the other angels. Now the second important event, and there's plenty of events recorded in between there, but the second recorded event was the completion of creation. And the reason that's so significant is when uh, God created the heavens and the earth, he looked and said it was good. When he created all the fish, he said it was very good. When he created night and day, he said it was very good. But when he got to the end and he created the very last thing recorded in the Bible, which is Eve, it says he looked around and saw that everything was very good. So the entire universe was in balance at that time. All right. That's the second historic event. And, and a lot of, here's the problem with, with the world we live in. We have access to millions of gigawatts or gigabytes or whatever of information uh, through the Internet. And I have been searching for years and years for a church that teaches the truth. And what I mean by truth is the things that are important. The two events I just told you about. Now here's the third most important event in history. You start out with the creation of the first living creature, the completion of creation. The next important event was the very first lie. We don't know how long the earth went or the universe went without a single lie. And there's a lot of details that are involved in this, and maybe I'll make a video about them later. I tried to put that in here in the last video and just wouldn't fit. But the very first lie was told by a spirit creature to the first woman. We know her as Eve. And when he told her the lie, 
it changed history forever. Do you remember what that lie was? Well, first off, he got real sneaky, and he said, he said to the woman, is it true that God says you can't eat this fruit off these trees? And she says, oh yeah, we can eat fruit off trees, just that one tree in the middle of the garden we can't eat off of, because if we do, we're going to die. See, God, the Creator, had told her the truth. If you eat from this piece of fruit, you will die. We don't know what kind of fruit that was. Up until this time, that tree was always called the tree that's in the middle of the garden. It was never called the tree of knowledge and good and bad. That actually, that title was added to it after this event. But when we get the Bible, it records it as being the actual name. But anyways, Satan said, uh, she said, if we eat from that fruit, we're going to die. Now, we don't know, you know, the, the command not to eat from that fruit was probably instinctive. Probably wasn't a verbal command. So, we don't know if the fruit was just not ripe yet, or uh, if that tree was the only tree of its kind and all the seeds had to be saved to propagate other trees like it, or if that tree's fruit was actually only meant for animal feed. I mean, we could just speculate all day. We don't know. But we know that Adam and Eve probably knew instinctively not to eat of that fruit. Then, Satan told the second lie. He told Eve, God is only worried that you will have the same knowledge as him if you eat from this fruit. Now, you got to remember, people think that we get our knowledge because Eve ate from that fruit. That's not true. Human beings at that time had an incredible wealth of knowledge beyond anything we know today. When they were created, they were created with the ability to understand the world around them like we'll never even know. They knew exactly how to use every plant in the, in the world. Every plant that they could possibly access, they knew what the uses of it were. They knew everything about every animal. In fact, it records in the Bible that God kept leading animals to Adam so he could examine them and figure out how they worked and what they were good for and what they did in their daily lives so that Adam could name those animals, similar to the way God names humans. You know, if you look in the Bible, you see uh, re rec records of uh, people that did very good deeds. God changed their name like uh, Abram. You know, we always read about him as Abraham. But his name didn't become Abraham until the Bible was written, or until he proved himself to be a father of a crowd, because that's what Abraham means. His original name was Abram. And so God wanted us to have the privilege of naming the animals the same way he had the privilege of naming people. So anyways, that's the, the first significant event, second, third, and uh, that led to the uh, next historic event. And that was Eve eating the fruit and then giving it to her husband so that he could eat it. Now, this was the first time that anyone, any fleshly creature, had broken God's law. And it had horrific consequences. Now, everybody knows that once that happened, God told them, cursed is the ground on account of you eating this fruit. And people think the churches actually teach that what that means is that God cursed the earth so that it wouldn't make food for the people. But that's not what that scripture is about. The scripture was about how if man and woman decided on their own to disconnect from Jehovah's Holy Spirit, the same way Satan disconnected from Jehovah's Holy Spirit, that eventually it would lead to the destruction of the earth. That's all it meant. Adam and Eve could still, even outside of the Garden of Eden, they could still eat from every tree that was good for food. They could live for the rest of their lives without ever working. The only thing they couldn't get to was the tree uh, of uh, life which was inside the Garden of Eden because that one tree was the only one that existed and God set cherubs all the way around there so that there was no way to get in to the Garden of Eden and eat from the tree of life. Okay, so that's the next event. Now, the book of Genesis is actually two books, or at least two books. It may have been made up from others, but for our purposes, the, the creation account is two books. From Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, to Genesis chapter 2, verse like 3 or 4, 
It is the account of creation, creation of the natural world. Then when you get to chapter 2, verse 4, or somewhere around there, it's actually a book of the account of the creation of civilization and the downfall of man. You can check this out for yourself. Uh, it, it actually starts as a new book. Just right in the middle of a paragraph it says, and now here is the is a history of Adam and Eve or something of that nature. But in any case, the next historic event that is recorded in the Bible is the first cutting down of trees. Now the Bible describes the earth as a tropical rainforest. North Pole, South Pole, the whole world was a forest, a rainforest, because it explains that it never rained. It always was a mist, and if you go to a rainforest, that's the way they act. Always there's a mist. It's always dripping, but when it rains, you don't know it. In other words, when the atmosphere pours rain onto a rainforest, it could take up to a week for the water in the top of the canopy to reach the ground. And if it goes for three or four months of drought, it's still dripping in the rainforest because the canopy holds the moisture in that's on the earth. And so if the whole earth was a canopy, you wouldn't need rain. But uh, what, uh, what happened was Cain cut down trees to begin an agricultural project. And God knew where that was leading. And so he approached Cain and said, look, you know, you're getting ready to do something very, very bad. You don't, you shouldn't do it. It's wrong. St you know, stop yourself before it's too late. And he got so mad because Abel wouldn't go along with him that he killed Abel. Immediately after that, it's recorded that Cain built the first city. That's significant because remember the original commandments back in the Garden of Eden were just very basic. Make love, reproduce offspring, have your offspring spread across the land mass of the earth. You know, that's what it means, fill the earth very basic way of saying have fill the earth don't fill population centers so the warning that God gave to Cain came true he was headed for doing something very bad and that was the very first beginnings of deforestation and actually if you go to Wikipedia and type in deforestation or uh, uh, something of that nature it will actually show you a map where it starts right in one little part of the earth and just goes right across the Holy Land and all those cities that are mentioned, all the way from uh, Egypt, Assyria, Persia, Babylon, Greece, Rome, and now look, here we are. We don't even recognize it as desert anymore. See where I live? This is the woods. This is the forest. This is not a 400-foot canopy. This is a 20-foot canopy. This is a desert. So anyways, that was the next significant event in the Bible. The next significant event in the Bible is that Satan went back to all the other angels and he, he convinced them to start doing bad things and the first bad thing they did was to come back to earth and have sexual relations with all of the women they could and reproduce hybrid offspring half demon half human they were called the Nephilim this is in the Bible and the reason I'm telling you this is because I went to many many churches in my life and some of the churches taught about this and some did it so there's probably a lot of people that don't know about the Nephilim. But that's recorded in Genesis 2. And I think it may be around chapter 8, because I think that's where the flood is. But uh, these Nephilim women were so powerful, and they were everywhere, and everybody knew they were there. That's the reason there's no... I know, you know, there's a lot of people that teach that the Nephilim are still here on earth. But according to the Bible account, when the Nephilim were here, they didn't hide themselves. They didn't stay in caves or, you know, just sit at the White House. They were in the markets. They were walking around. If you went to Walmart, there would be Nephilim in there. And not only that, they were like rock stars. And if they were here on the earth, they would have that same position today. Later in the Bible, we hear about giants. But the giants, the stories of giants we hear about, these guys are just workers. They're not famous. Uh, there's nothing else said about them, you know, they, they just appear like big humans. But uh, the, next, the next historic event, oh, and well, let's talk about this event. We're not told which demons came down to earth. We're not told which women they made it with. 
but you can just use your simple powers of reasoning here. First off, if Satan was the one that told them to do it, do you think he would just stay up in heaven and send them down here? Satan was one of the demons that came down here and made it with women. Also, by that time, no telling how many women were here, but what woman do we know of would be here? It's the only one mentioned in the Bible. Is Eve. And there's another thing about Eve. Since she was created without sin, without imperfection, she would have been the only perfect woman on the planet. Other than the fact she sinned. But all her offspring, and you could check this out for yourself, as time went on, from creation to the flood, people's ages got shorter and shorter and shorter as they got more and more imperfections in their genetic makeup till we get to where we are today. I mean, Adam lived to be 960 years or something like that. We live 60 or 70, maybe 80 if we're especially, you know, healthy. But you can see that the only perfect woman that would have still been alive when the Nephilim came was Eve. So there's no reason to believe that Satan wasn't involved and Eve wasn't involved. And that's extremely important to understanding the Bible. And I have never once heard of a church or anybody teaching this, but it's a fact. From then on, the only stories that we got are supporting stories. So there's nothing really incredibly historic until we get to Noah. God looked around and he said the earth was being ruined. And he said he had to do something before human beings completely killed everything on the planet. And no, that's not word for word what the Bible says, but it does say that God realized he had to put a stop to it. He hated to bring the flood, and it says that he, he didn't want to do it. Uh, but it was the only way to save the earth. And so the flood was a mechanism to get rid of all of the Nephilim, those, those half-breed creatures, along with the demons. The demons were in physical bodies at that time. They would have to leave their physical bodies in order to save their lives. And that's All of this is very important to understanding not just uh, world history in the Bible, but understanding the all-seeing eye. And uh, that's pretty much where I'm going to end it. I've, I've put way too much in this before. Now here comes your next hint. This is hint number two. I've already told you that this all-seeing eye down here is the same as this all-seeing eye. Where did I get that information? Any encyclopedia, Wikipedia, Google, any church, any industry, any government will tell you that this eye is based on this eye. They don't know why, but they know it. Well, some of the higher-ups do know why. But before, I told you that this was not oriented properly. And you figured out that this represented the human female reproductive organ with a fertilized egg in it. What I'm going to tell you now is that this also is not oriented properly, but for different reasons. And I'll also give you another hint. This triangle represents the trinity. It had to be added to the eye because the trinity was taken out of the eye. Originally, the trinity was in the eye. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or actually in this it's Father, Son, and Holy Mother. She didn't become Father, Son, and Holy Spirit till this. So hopefully, if you look at this, you'll understand what's going on. This is actually a series of three hieroglyphs or as my uh, friend in South Africa calls them, hieroglyphs. So that's your next hint. And I think a lot of people are going to get this. If you know what, how to read these hieroglyphs, and look, I know hieroglyphs are an ancient dead language, but it's a picture language. Pretty much looking at the picture will tell you what the hieroglyphs are about, usually. So if you figure it out and you go, wow, I know what that is, Send me a pe personal message. If you look at that and you say, oh, that's mascara and mascara is a sin, just type that on the video. Don't send me a private message. I don't want to get clogged up with 700 more emails tomorrow morning. But anyways, uh, I love you. And if you don't want to survive, don't listen to me. And knowing the past and knowing the future is critical. Just this one image is the key to unlocking the past and the future.